All right, friends. Hey, welcome to another week. And man, this one I am just so excited about because it's the culmination of our series. And we're getting closer and closer to our June 2nd date of resuming public services at the rec center at six o'clock. Um, I am just so excited about it. And I hope you can participate in helping us grow this service to reach our city. Hey, sit back and enjoy this talk. It's about the salt and light of our church. God bless you. So this is our last week looking at your kingdom come. And this sermon has come from the idea, what is the culture that God des desires for us? Now I'm excited to close in this way because I'm going to be talking about our church. And this specifically for you is an invitation about how we treat each other. Today we're going to be talking about salt and light, the idea that the church is meant to be this stark fragrance this bright light for him. Here's what Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. What do you think about the church in America today? I'm going to give you guys some time to talk about this in your group afterwards, but my guess is you have all kinds of thoughts. Some people have had bad experiences, some good, some uh, churches they liked and others they didn't. Some of us have been looking for a church home for 20 years and never found a place we fit. As a whole, the church seems to be shifting, adjusting, changing, and there's so many churches. I mean, it feels like almost on every corner there's another church, and yet are churches changing the world? In some ways, it may feel like the influence, the light, the saltiness is fading away. And what about the vineyard? I mean, are we crushing it in terms of God's light and salt to the earth for us? Or are we just getting by? Today, I want to take a deeper look at these words of Jesus and then compare it to what God has called the vineyard to be. Now, I want to take an honest look together at our church but I also want to give ourselves grace as we try to be what Jesus called us to be. And ultimately, I want to look to the future and say, is it possible that we could be the church that we dream of being in response to Jesus' love for us? So let's look at the rest of the scripture, what Jesus said, and try to make sense of our own church and our own community. Here's what he said. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored. It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. In this series, we've been saying that there's a culture in the kingdom of God. In other words, whenever you interact with somebody or some group of people in the church, there should be a distinct difference, a saltiness, a light that is true to that culture. Jesus promises us and demonstrated it by his life that that kingdom is different than the kingdom of earth. And yet he's bringing it in. He's infiltrating it everywhere. He uses two analogies in this uh, parable or, or passage that I want to look at. One is salt and one is light. The first salt. Salt was a very distinct thing 2,000 years ago and it still is today. Think about all the things that salt has been used for. I mean, I love putting salt on my food. I don't know about you. I mean, especially sea salt, which to me just tastes the best. But salt's also used to cure meat. It was used as a preservative um, for bobby, bodies for mummification. Did you know that in some cultures, salt was uh, believed to arouse sexual desire? <laughs> so salt was taken in droves before, uh, you know, sex was had. And it was like this idea that 
that, sa uh, that salt had something unique that would get us going. Salt, did you know, was used, one of the first ingredients used for gunpowder by the Chinese. And then it was used in the Middle East to, um, to coat the fish, both for taste and preservatives. I mean, at one point it's said that salt was even more valuable than gold. And did you know that uh, the word salary came from the word salarium? This is a Roman term for a soldier's earned ration of salt or wage. It's interesting, without salt, there's a condition that would happen and our bodies would break. We would die. That is called hyponatremia. Not very good at those type of terms, but you get the idea. I mean, we need salt. And so when Jesus talked about us being salt, he was saying there's a distinction for those of us that are Christian tastes a certain way, it feels a certain way, it, uses it, it serves a unique purpose. And we are to be salted among the earth to give earth, humanity, life, its purpose, meaning, and value. And then he uses this word light. And there's a lot of things that we could use to help us understand light. I mean, just think of a dark time, a time when you're at night or just in a totally dark room and you find the light switch. I mean, we could all tell stories probably of tripping in the dark and then the light comes on and all of a sudden we know our way. And so somehow the kingdom of God is meant to be this place where all things are illuminated. You know, this uh, word has extra meaning to me. We named our youngest daughter Lucy. And there was a very specific reason. Uh, Vanessa, when she was pregnant, and we had had a particularly hard month in preparation for church planning and, and just having this baby, uh, one morning, Vanessa was spending time with God, reading the scriptures and journaling, and she felt like God spoke to her about this baby in her tummy. And she said, uh, she said God said, this baby is going to be a gift to you in this hard season, and she is going to be a light. And so when Lucy was born, we, we named her Lucy, which means light, and Michelle, which means gift of God, because we believed that God was telling the truth about her. And now that Lucy's eight, um, I mean, it just, it makes me emotional because I think of the joy that I experience with her. <laughs> she has got what we call a light bulb smile. And any of you who know Lucy know that. I mean, when she smiles, the whole room smiles. And, and just, uh, just the other day, I was, man, I was having a hard day. And I went to pick her up from school. And she does this, by the way, every single Wednesday when she goes to school. She comes home with a card for me. And the card says the same thing every week. And I had had this hard day, and even though I knew I was going to receive the card, I forgot about it. And she came running to me after school, light bulb smile, gives me a hug, and then hands me my card. And I open it up like I do every week. But this week, man, it just connected like a, like a punch to the chest. And she said, Daddy, I love you, and you are the best. She was like this light to my soul. And she's constantly doing that. I mean, it... It reminds me of a time when uh, actually this last Christmas, we decided that for a few of our leaders at the vineyard, instead of just sort of giving them a gift, we wanted to come and carol at their house for them. And so we tried to do that for as many as we could. And one specific person I remember, we uh, went to their door, you know, it's coronavirus, we're all separated, it was dark, and we knock and they're like, what are you doing here? And we start singing and our, you know, two kids and Vanessa and I, and then we get to the end and she said, oh, thank you, that means so much. And then she said, you know, I'm just having a hard time. I'm really struggling. I don't feel like I'm doing a good enough job with church and some other things. And Lucy, out of nowhere, right, looks at her and says, I think you're doing great. And in that moment, this woman stopped and looked at Lucy and said, thank you. I needed to hear that. That's what light is. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He was saying there should be something different. You know what? I, I want our church to be like that. It's always been my dream for our church. And I think in this season, 
it's more possible than ever. We have the chance, friends, to come out of this coronavirus season charging our world with the love of God. It makes me think of uh, the message translation, uh, how he closed one of the sections that we read a couple weeks ago. He said this, in a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Your kingdom subjects now live like it. Live out your God created identity. Live generously and graciously towards others the way that God lives towards you. I mean, what's all this mean? Jesus came to start a cultural revolution. And friends, we get the opportunity as the vineyard to respond to that. We get to live into this cultural revolution, a way of love that is distinctly different than the world around us. You know, as a community, we've always said we wanted to do two things really well, and it's become our vision statement. It is this, we want to be the kind of people that reach up to God with everything that we have and reach out to others. In other words, we want to abide in God's love. We want to connect with God dynamically, and then we want that to change how we interact with others. In this season, I'm inviting you to join us as a vineyard, to re-engage, to re-sign up, to, to re-come as we engage in public services to be that to our community. And I wanted to take this chance to share what it is that we believe is the light and salt of the Vineyard Church. Now we call these our values and we've just recently met as a team and decided, man, these are the five things that we're gonna hang our hat on. These are gonna be the five non-negotiable ways that we live as a culture towards each other. Here's what they are. Number one, we hunger for God. I just love this. Uh, we are all about connecting and we will never stop until we ex uh, continually connect with God. And we even said that amidst all the experiences that we experience, we want our experience to, with God to be over and above. And we believe that it is He and He alone that give us the power to transform or to be transformed and experience full life. Hunger for God. The second thing is hopeful. We believe that our best days are ahead and that there is a bright future for the people around us. And that's why we're always inviting the next person. And that's why we love our neighbors and our coworkers and our friends. And that's why we always believe that God could change everything in a moment. The next thing is we embrace tension and are curious. That is, we recognize that the world is changing. It's difficult. It's unique. And we are not the kind of black and white people that say, hey, if you're with us, you're all the way over here. <laughs> God is like this. You, are, you know, if you're there, instead, we recognize that to everything, there is tension and complexity and uniqueness. There's so many things in the world that we might not have the answer to, but we step in with curiosity believing that faith is in the middle of holding both extremes. The fourth thing is that we are authentic. We're not doing some show or selling some, you know, something. <laughs> we are real people that are broken and trying to find God in the brokenness. I like the phrase that we are wounded healers. You know, we, we just are who we are. We're not trying to use preacher voices and fancy prayers and all that kind of stuff. We just hunger to actually experience God and we live that way towards others. And then the last thing, number five, is that we are always moving towards people with open arms. I believe this is huge for our culture. I was talking to a pastor just yesterday. He's a pastor of the church. Uh, actually, he's an ex-pastor now of a church in town. And we were talking about our future plans. I was sharing with him what God has excited us about. And he said, you know what? I've believed for years that a church needed to plant a flag in the ground for what God wants to do in this community. And I don't know, it was this mix of a challenge and invitation. He said he believes that the opportunity is there and, and the need is there. And frankly, he was just saying that he doesn't see it happening right now but that it's time 
for a church to swell up their chest and say, we are going to fight for the lost, the hurting, the broken, and the disconnected in our city. And I just felt like my the passion in my chest rising up that that could be us, Vineyard Church. In this season, this could be us. We could be the ones that plant that stake for our city, that keep loving people, that keep inviting people into the kingdom culture. You know, it kind of brings me to the practicals and, and the last minutes, you know. We, we've decided as a church community that it's time to pursue a permanent location for our church. We've kind of said that the best thing about our church for a long time was our flexibility. But if we want to be a long-term presence for Jesus, we need to replace flexibility with steadiness and faithfulness. And so, man, there are big things ahead. We're going to be fundraising. We're looking for locations to build or partnerships with other churches. I mean, we're kind of just in this open-handed place of God. How are you going to allow us to have a home to invite people in, a hub to give people the opportunity on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to experience the kingdom? through recovery classes and gifts to the poor and invitations for Bible studies and just a myriad of opportunities to love on people in our city. You know, if we're going to do this huge dream that we believe God's called us to, we need all of us to go all in. And I hope in terms of a practical, you hear this right now, and your blood is starting to pump. And you're saying, I want to be a part of that. I want to see the Vineyard Church experience our cultural dreams, our goals of reaching this city for Jesus. Maybe this sermon is a flag in the ground for us saying we will no longer wait, but we're going to fight for what God has for our kingdom. Friends, we are the salt. We are the light. Jesus has promised us that we are that. So let's start living like it. God bless you. All right, friends, it's question times. Uh, questions time. Que yeah, it's that time. I'm excited about this because I'm going to give you guys a chance to dream about what the vineyard could be. So first question, what do you dream that the Vineyard Church will be. Okay, next question. Which value of our church gets you most excited? And last question. How can you help the church live out our culture? Hey, God bless you guys. Thanks for being a part of this.